his speech in the humorous speech contest at the District 9 Fall Conference in Coeur d'Alene this Saturday evening. Tonight, Lloyd will be presenting it as Project 6, Vocal Variety from the Competent Communicator Manual, because he's fine-tuning his vocal variety. Lloyd Smith, and even more stupid, Have you ever dared to be stupid? I don't mean the run-of-the-mill kind of stupid that we all stumble into every now and then. The kind that might make you take a trigonometry exam without studying, or grab an electric fence to find out whether it's turned on. I'm talking about the kind of stupid that has to be sought out and nurtured. The kind of stupid that might make someone pursue a completely ridiculous dream and achieve it spectacularly. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, let's meet someone who did exactly that. Lawn Chair Larry Walters. For the first 30 years of his life, Larry Walters seemed to be the quintessential average guy. However, one seemingly insignificant incident in his childhood dictated his future and determined his fate. When he was about 10 years old, Larry saw some clusters of helium balloons floating near the ceiling of a store. For some reason, those balloons captured his imagination, and he became obsessed with the idea of flying, not with airplanes, but with helium balloons. For the next 20 years, he dreamed about it. He planned it. He talked about it until his family and friends were sick of hearing about it. And then one day, he did it. The late afternoon of July 2nd, 1982, found Larry Walters clutching a paper sack containing his in-flight meal of two ham sandwiches and four cans of Miller Lite. <laughs> he was sitting in a Sears aluminum lawn chair that was tethered to 45 helium-filled weather balloons and tied to the bumper of his girlfriend's car in her driveway in San Pedro, California. Larry had christened his craft Inspiration won, and he was prepared for the adventure of a lifetime. Well, sort of prepared. Unfortunately, 20 years of dreaming and planning and talking had not produced any actual knowledge. Larry assumed that his 45 balloons would be enough to lift him a thousand or maybe even 2,000 feet into the air. He got a big surprise when a friend cut the rope holding him to the car bumper and he rocketed into the sky at a thousand feet per minute until he reached 16,000 feet. That's a third of a mile higher than the top of Mount Rainier. Larry also assumed that the onshore winds near the surface would blow him east out over the Los Angeles suburbs and toward the desert where his friends who would be following along in the car would pick him up. He got a big surprise when the offshore winds at 16,000 feet blew him west directly into the flight path of Los Angeles International Airport. <laughs> Within a few minutes, the pilots of two inbound passenger jets had frantically radioed the control tower to report that they had just missed colliding in midair with a guy in a lawn chair. <laughs> the FAA closed the airport and three dozen flights were either diverted to other airports or, or held on the ground. The resulting delays inconvenienced thousands of travelers all over the western U.S. Larry was relieved to drift away from the airport flight path, but then he realized that the infinite Pacific Ocean looming to the west was actually becoming even more infinite with every passing minute, and the next land he saw might be China. <laughs> he decided to activate his only flight control, a pellet gun tied to his wrist with a string. He began shooting at his balloons, and it worked. He gently descended to the streets of Long Beach. Well, almost to the streets. He became entangled in the overhead power lines, and his rescuers had to turn off the electricity at 10 square blocks of downtown Long Beach during the evening rush hour <laughs> on a Friday. The first day of a holiday weekend. <laughs> it took four hours to clear out the resulting traffic gridlock. Larry was arrested and charged with 12 federal crimes. Even worse, 
In the old excitement, he forgot completely about his ham sandwiches and four cans of Miller Lite. <laughs> he eventually paid his $1,200 fine, enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame, including an interview on David Letterman's show, and then drifted back into obscurity. I've thought a lot about Bon Chair Larry Walters in the three decades since he made his epic flight. I can see him clearly in my mind's eye as he drifts across the brown Southern California sky in his lawn chair. He's shivering with the cold and gasping for breath in the thin air. And he's terrified when he looks down and sees the ground nearly three miles beneath his dangling feet. But despite all that, he has a big, dumb grin on his face. That's because for 90 glorious minutes, Larry Walters dared to be stupid enough to do exactly what he had dreamed of doing. Larry Walters was a visionary, a man who lived decades ahead of his time. He was the prototype of the modern American mindset that has made our great nation the undisputed world leader in reality TV shows and YouTube videos. He taught us all a vital lesson about achieving our own dreams. No knowledge, no experience, no common sense, no problem. Just release your inner lawn chair, Larry, and let him soar. Dare to be stupid. <laughs> I like how he said, dare to be stupid, and then turn to the applause. <laughs> Perhaps it's because I am a long-term...